I'm buying a truck and I am most likely gonna overpay for it. And I would have had one last week if it weren't for this blood sucking salesman who ruined the deal. <laughs> Allow me to explain. So before I get into it, I keep hearing left and right from the veterans, the experts, not to overpay for a truck or overpay for equipment. The question is, what is overpaying? What is fair price? What is overpriced? Where's that fine line? So last week I was looking at a truck from a dealer, from a reputable dealer for, they were asking a hundred and $40,000. I went up there to the dealer. I looked at it. It ran great. It looked great. I mean, it was an awesome truck. It was a 2020 Cascadia DD15 automatic transmission, 380,000 miles, full sleeper, double bunk. It was an awesome truck, man. It was white. It was clean. It was well-maintained. It had the service and repair history. And they were asking 140,000 for it. And in my opinion, I think it was overpriced between 10 and 20,000, but hey, that's what they were asking for. They couldn't really budge at all on the price. So I said, you know what? I'm gonna go with it. Let's, let's do it. So I went up to the dealer. I spoke with the sales rep. I said, hey, what are the monthly payments looking like on this uh, truck? He said, eh, 3,000. I was like, 3,000 is not gonna cut it. I need 2,800 for this to work. He said, okay, we'll, we'll be able to talk to the bank rep. Maybe we'll be able to extend the, uh, the term limit and maybe we'll be able to get um, an, a point of interest or a half point down. I was like, okay, cool, let me know. So I told them I'd think about it. Uh, let me rerun my numbers because initially I was not planning on going for a truck that had a $2,800 monthly payment. I was initially looking for $2,500. So I thought about it over the weekend. I ran my numbers. The numbers came back great. I can make it work. You know, time is money. Time is precious. I can't be waiting, waiting around for these prices of trucks to come down. So I said, you know what? Let's do it. $2,800. Let's go for a 29, you know, tops, but let's shoot for 28. He gets back to me a week later with all the loan docs. The truck payment is $3,245. That's a big negative big big negative i told them that's a no-go you pretty much knew this is what the payment was going to look like thank you for wasting my time i need a different truck so here i am it's monday it's october 3rd 2022 monday i messaged him i told him i need a new list of trucks he sent me over a new list of trucks i'll review these trucks when i get home later this afternoon and i'll still be moving forward with getting an overpriced truck you, you're probably asking yourself, why is he gonna overpay for a truck? Knowingly, willingly overpay for a truck, why? Why am I gonna inherit a truck payment of $2,800, an insurance payment of $2,400, and these are accurate numbers. I've done a lot of research, I've called around, I've gotten hard quotes with the appropriate VIN numbers, with my driving history my driving experience these are hard numbers truck payment twenty eight hundred dollars insurance payment twenty four hundred dollars i plan on running power only for the first four and a half five months from the los angeles area i'm based out of san diego california so i plan on running out of the socal area thank you la uh, port and long beach port for being the leading import of goods in the western hemisphere Thank you for that. And California, 45 million acres of land dedicated to agriculture, fifth largest economy in the world. This is where I'm based. I crunched the numbers for this area. I plan on running from Southern California to Oregon and Washington and straight back. That's about a six day trip, three day up, three day back. And I've ran it before when I drove for Swift. I'm, I'm very familiar with this route. So I can comfortably say It'll take me three days up, three days back. Also, I've had my DOT number, my MC number, which my MC uh, lapsed. It's not authorized for hire. It's, it's not authorized uh, authority, but I do have an MC number. And I also have a DOT number. I have my BOC3 on file. I have, I have everything I need to get access to the load boards to see live what sort of work I'm looking at, specifically the DAT load board. 
And I can confidently say I can make 4,000 going north and 2,000 coming back at a minimum, just $6,000 a week, four weeks out of the month, $24,000. After all my expenses, truck payment, insurance payment, dispatch, just 10%. My dispatcher is also going to be my head administrative uh, employee. They're going to do a fine job. I'm looking forward to working with them. They're getting a flat rate of 10%, whatever the company grosses. Also, my subscriptions, load boards, ELD, um, my accounting team, everything. All my subscriptions, fuel. Here in California, the average price of diesel per gallon is $6.25. The truck I'm looking to get is going to get an average of 7 MPG. If I drive up to Oregon or Washington and back, that's 2,600 miles round trip at 7 MPG. That's 372 gallons of diesel, which is roughly $2,400 of diesel a week. Everything is calculated appropriately. I'm looking at $19,000. Also, let me let me backtrack for a second. Also taking into consideration putting money away for maintenance, putting money away for taxes, and putting myself on the payroll, paying myself $800 a week, small sacrifices I'm gonna have to make, $800 a week for the first four and a half, five months. I'm All my expenses, I'm looking at $19,000. So if my expenses are $19,000 per month and I'm expected to gross 24,000, power only, LA area up to Oregon and Washington and back. I'm looking at a four to 5,000 net profit, four to $5,000 net profit. How much am I making here as a company driver? I make $27 an hour. I work about uh, 50 hour work weeks. I bring in about $1,500 a week, which is about 6,000 a month. Half of that goes to state and federal taxes goes to rent for my apartment, goes to my car insurance, goes to putting food on the table, utilities, phone bill, all that stuff. So that leaves me with a net profit of $3,000 a month doing what I'm doing here now. Building someone else's company, generating what more wealth for them, $3,000 a month profit was what I'm doing here. If I go get a truck now and overpay according to the veterans and the experts for all my equipment, overpay for diesel, overpay for my truck and insurance, initially be profiting four to five thousand dollars a month. My plan is do that for four or five months, save up twenty-two thousand dollars, put ten thousand straight away in the bank on top of the money I've been putting away for maintenance and taxes straight into the bank ten thousand dollars for taxes and a rainy day fund in case uh, i gotta do any maintenance tire blowouts anything and putting twelve thousand dollars down for a reefer trailer once i get that reefer trailer i'll be inheriting uh more expenses my expenses will go up from nineteen thousand to twenty five thousand insurance goes up i'll be inheriting another monthly payment on my equipment and my dispatcher makes more money company makes more money my dispatcher makes more money I'll also be uh, spending more on diesel. So my expenses go from 19,000 to 25,000. It's a lot of money per month. But having that reefer trailer, I'll be able to make gross revenue, gross 32,000 to 36,000 a month. That's eight to 9,000 a week, which means I'll be having a net profit going from four to 5,000 to seven to $11,000 a month from the Los Angeles area up to Oregon and Washington and back. I'll be able to get 5,000 going up, 3,000 minimum coming down, minimum. And these are realistic numbers. I've been on the load board every single day after work, looking at these numbers live, direct. And yeah, you might say, well, you're gonna be a new venture. It's gonna be hard for you to get loads. True. But that's only going to be a real challenge the first three months. And the first three months, I've, I've already got it figured out. I have a list of dozens and dozens of brokers that will work with me right off the rip. Right off the rip, it's about making sacrifices, not necessarily about making a lot of money. But after those four to five months, I'll get that reefer and I'll be profiting seven to 11,000. How much am I profiting here as a company driver? 3,000 a month. How much am I gonna be profiting after I get that truck and trailer? Seven to 11,000 for 
overpaying for all my equipment, overpaying for diesel, overpaying for insurance, overpaying for a truck and trailer. Hearing all these veterans say, maybe now is not the right time to get into trucking. You're right. Maybe for the person that doesn't have a plan, the person that isn't committed and dedicated, the person that isn't ready to make these sacrifices, maybe it, for them it's not the right time. But for me, it's, it's definitely the right time. When everyone's getting out, you gotta get in. There's a reason. There's a reason they're getting out. Because they can't handle it, fine. Let them get out, I can handle it. I'll put in the work. Time is money, my friends. Time is money, time is precious. Time is one of the few things you cannot get back in this life, in this world. You must use your time wisely. And I refuse, I refuse to spend my time building someone else's wealth, growing someone else's company. I will put in the work and do that for my own. But this is coming out of California. These numbers are coming out of California. I can't say you'll make this amount of money out of Texas. I can't say the same for Florida. I can't say the same for the East Coast. I can't say the same for Midwest. You gotta put in the time and effort and put in the research and figure it out. Come up with a plan. Run the numbers five, six, seven times. Don't just run it once or twice, flip a coin, get into it and see if you do good or not. You're not gonna get far in this industry if you do that. It's about strategic calculated risk. Strategic and calculated risk. You gotta be real honest with yourself if you wanna pursue this route. You're gonna wake up in the morning not wanting to do it, wanting to quit. There's not gonna be motivation to keep you going. You're gonna have to discipline yourself to stay on track. Keep your eyes on the prize. I want the big house. I want the fast cars. I want the bikes. I want the financial freedom to go to a, any restaurant, order anything and everything off the menu and not worry about the bill. I wanna be able to travel the world. I want to be able to do all these things, provide for not only myself, but my family as my coworker. <laughs> we all only have one life. You got to make the most out of it, but do, you got to be honest with yourself. Do not do this if you're a quitter, if you're lazy. Do not do this. It's going to require a lot of uh, blood, sweat and tears, my friends, a lot of hard days, a lot of days where you're going to want to quit, but you're going to have to stay disciplined. This is my plan. So yes, I'm gonna overpay for all this equipment insurance. I'm gonna be underpaid with these loads. But once I get one truck, one trailer, and I do it for 10, 12 months, and have a lot of money in the bank, get another truck, another trailer, pay my driver well, pay them $1,800, $2,000 a week, pay them well. That's my plan. I'm not gonna do this forever. So right now I'm looking around, I'm in the market for a truck. I'm in the market for an overpriced truck. A truck that's still gonna make me a lot more money than this. Time is precious, time is money, don't waste it. Thanks for tuning in guys. Stay tuned for the next one. Take care, be safe out there.